G'day all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro, where today we're taking a deeper look into using multiple imaging cameras with APT. I'm going to go through up the setup and the configuration that will allow you to use the multiple cameras, as well as synchronising them if you're using dithering, because there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a long image and having one camera trying to dither in the middle of it so you lose the image. But we'll go through all that. Um, by default, your initial install of APT set you up to use two cameras um, so if you just want to do something like piggyback a DSLR on top of your scope or maybe you want to do something like I'm hoping to do in the future when the funds allow me which is you have two identical telescopes uh, one running a mono camera for narrowband and the other running a one-shot color to get the uh, color into it so that's you know if you want to do that APT from the get-go is set up to do that but maybe you're a little bit more adventurous uh, maybe you want to be like a couple of the universities around the world uh, here's the Huntsman telescope from Macquarie University in New South Wales Australia and um, where it's got 10 lenses going at once um, or maybe the dragonfly from the University of Toronto in Canada um, a bit more adventurous than I'd be and I'm not saying these use APT they probably use their own software but APT is capable of doing it uh, if you want but I'll show you how to set up for extra ones if you want to run more than two so that's what we're going to be doing in this one it might be a fairly long video so I'm sorry about that but there is a little bit involved in it next we'll get up and have a quick look of what you, we're going to go through today so what exactly do you require for multiple cameras? Well first of all, each camera you're going to use needs to have its own profile created. I won't be going through that in here, I've done another deep dive video covering profiles, I'll link to it in the description, you can go have a look at that if you need to set up multiple profiles. Then I'll go through uh, the starting of multiple instances of APT and the requirements there. As at that time I'll do uh, the creation of extra shortcuts you need if you want to do more than two cameras and you know what you need to do to start APT in the multiple uh, instances Then I'll go through the camera selection uh, deciding which camera is going to be which uh, for this you need one camera will always be the server and any additional cameras will be the client and you need to decide which is going to be which then we'll take a look at the uh, dithering modes for the server and get that set up because the server will control basically everything to do with the mount um, rather than having it split over the two of them and then finally I'll give a demonstration of actually an imaging session type setup it won't be a real instance it's uh, I don't have the sky at the moment to be able to do it but what I'll be doing I'll be running the sim camera as a CMOS on my main setup and I'll have my DSLR connected it's not going to be taking any images of anything because um, it's inside and it's got the lens cap on so you're not going to see anything but just to show you how it works so first of all you need to go through and create your two profiles these profiles are created exactly the same as any other profile there's nothing special to do select your camera and all your other settings just to you know, keep them all separate and um, just create one of each but now I'm going to get step into starting multiple instances of APT. So here we go. Now as I said, APT by default installs uh, the things you need to do at least two cameras. So if you go into your menu uh, and look down for APT, when you have a look down here, you'll see there's actually four uh, shortcuts here. Of course the simulation, that's elsewhere. But you have APT, you have APT Camera 1 and APT Camera 2. Now, if you're only running one camera, you can run either the APT or the Camera 1. I actually use the Camera 1 all the time. Uh, my shortcut down here is APT Camera 1. It just saves me switching between them later on. But if you're running multiple cameras, you will need to run APT Camera 1 and APT Camera 2. So one for each camera. Now if you have more than two cameras, uh, the easiest way to deal with that is simply on your computer browse to where you've got APT installed, uh, by default it will be in your program files x86, go into the directory, find the APT exec, uh, right click on it, and then you want to go down and, uh, where are we, show more options, send to, 
uh, you want to go to desktop create shortcut and that'll create just a normal shortcut on your desktop uh, so if we get out of that now you'll see I have apt exec shortcut and what you do there is right click on it go to properties and all you need to do is add a new camera number a space and then the number of the camera so this would be number three okay and apply and okay and then you can re rename this as you like uh, so I could rename this APT camera oops not two three so there we go and now I've created a shortcut that will start a third instance of APT and allow me to connect a third camera if I wished but that's all you need to do there so like I said by default APT has the setup already for two cameras and you don't need to do anything else if you're only using the two cameras you just got to remember that when you start it you've got to start APT1 and then APT2 uh, other than that it's exactly the same as starting a normal APT session um, but I guess the first thing you really have to do is decide what camera is going to be which so we'll talk about that in just a couple of seconds so now you've got your profile set up you've set up the shortcuts you need if you need any extra ones and know which ones to use you need to decide which camera is going to be which so you need to know which one's going to be the server and which one's going to be the client and that's pretty simple to decide basically it's the one with the longest exposures will should be the server um, if they're both taking the same length exposures it doesn't really matter which is which but if you've got different length exposures uh, then you want to have the one with the longest exposures as your server and it will be the first one you launch uh, that'll be your camera one shortcut you'll use for that and then the one taking the shorter exposures the client will be your camera two shortcut so let's get into that and have a look how to get them configured Okay, so we have everything set up and prepared for your multi-camera imaging. We have our separate profiles. And just a note, they don't have to be special profiles made just for this. These can be your everyday profiles, just as long as each camera has its own. Uh, if you're running more than two cameras, you've created extra shortcuts if you need them. Uh, setting up the extra cameras works exactly the same as setting up camera two. So now we just need to launch APT. Now I've got PHD2 running in simulator mode down here and the sky simulator because I'll be using the mount and uh, camera etc from that for this demonstration. So to get into it you can either if you haven't created a shortcut on your desktop or whatever, wherever um, simply go into your start menu APT and you can see you've got camera 1 and camera 2 by default they're installed so you just launch camera 1 and this will be your server camera so you need to make sure you know which one you're going to be running as your server and just launch that and away it goes and it starts just like any other version of APT uh, once it gets up and running it's there now it's quite simple to get into your server mode uh, simply either go to the gear tab and click uh, click on the uh, settings buttons for your guiding or f7 shortcut will get you in there as well so all you need to do is first of all you change this to being the server and then you need to decide what mode you're going to use it in um, strict mode is basically each camera takes one image so the client camera will do its one image then it'll wait for the uh, server camera to finish do its dither then it'll take another one um, that works well if you have cameras where your second camera your client camera is taking images about half or more the length of your server camera so if you're taking say 30 second exposures on your server camera and 15 or 20 second exposures on your uh, client camera then yes strict mode's fine for that uh, but even in that situation loose mode will work and um, what loose mode is is if the client camera finishes imaging and it has enough time to get another image in before the server camera finishes it will take the second image or third or fourth depending on how you're set up for length so if you're doing you know, a minute long exposure with your main camera and your clients doing 
15 second exposures uh, you'll get three exposures off your client before the uh, main camera finishes imaging and you won't get the full you know, 15 seconds you won't get four if you're doing 60 seconds due to delays between the images themselves transferring them etc etc but you will get most of them in so that's just how that works on loose mode um, I pretty much always use loose mode it works for me so that but that's up to you uh, the ping timeout shouldn't have any need to extend this or shorten it uh, you probably don't want to shorten it but you may want to extend it it's up to you now the final thing you may want to think about while you're in these settings is your dithering distance um, because both your setups are likely to be completely different and everything else and have different requirements for dithering distances uh, you may need to do a bit of a compromise here to still get the same results or similar results on both cameras um, a distance of six on mine here that's set up for my Newtonian my 150mm Newtonian with this camera and that gets me about 15 pixels on the imaging camera for this one the problem is if I'm using my DSLR with the 300mm lens it needs a dithering distance of, of 12 to get the same result um, so you might need a little bit of compromise there I'm going to change this to 9 and that way I'll probably end up dithering about 20 pixels on this camera and probably 10 or so on the other camera and that works out fine for me there but once you've got that set up and how you want uh, you may not want to change it at all so then you just need to click OK so it's set up ready to run in server mode and that's all you need to do um, I'm just going to go in here I'll select the plan that I've created for this uh, multicam demo what did I do it that way for but my multicam demo so I've got this set up it's going to be do three 20 second exposures uh, just to, for a demo when I finish in here so that's the server set up like I said not much to it just set it to server mode and the uh, whether you want it strict or loose mode so now we need to go in and start the second one and same thing uh, if you haven't got the uh, shortcut elsewhere into APT and use the camera 2 shortcut and this is going to be my DSLR so I'll just click on OK let all that connect up uh, da, 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 da. and it's up and running so okay again into your uh, dithering settings again and all you need to do in this one is simply change that to client mode because all dithering now and anything you do with the mount should now be done on the server side not on the client side so that's okay so all this is going to be doing is controlling the uh, imaging itself now I need to connect the camera on this everything else is connected that needs to be uh, it's connected to the same mount and everything else uh, you need to connect to the mount to get all the details for your location and everything else in files and that so first of all I need to connect the camera and just a note with a Canon camera if you're connecting it I'm not sure if this is the same with Nikon but um, if the camera is set to auto and it's actually being connected as the client it will not connect to the camera if you set it to auto as you see cannot detect camera um, for some reason or other while it's still going to come up as camera one because that's the way the cameras are numbered by uh, for the DSLRs it won't automatically connect to that one so I need to set this as camera one I do not know if this is the same as for uh, a Nikon camera but if you're connecting your Canon camera as a second camera after a uh, CMOS camera make sure you come in and select it as one and then it'll connect with no problems so there we go the camera's connected um, while I'm in here I'll select the plan that I've done here as you see five seconds exposures and uh, I'm going to do ten of them so they work out about the same it's going to be about the same distance and that's it that's all you need to do at the moment um, I'll go back into camera one as you see incoming dithering system connection established so they're talking to each other the way they should so I'll be back in a second to just to run through a quick demo of getting it all going okay so now we've been through all the steps we're up to the final part and that is to start the imaging session and that's pretty easy to do so straight into APT now as I said you should set everything up uh, move your mount and everything else through your um, server mode just so everything knows what's going on okay I'm going to go to objects 
I need to pick an object that's pretty high in the sky. Um, uh, okay, so I'll do do the uh, tarantula nebula. That'll do. And go to and while that's moving. Now, if you want to add the name in your second one. Um, on your camera too. You can either enter it manually or you can just use the object list anyway and, and fill it in for the details. So go to the to-do list. I'm doing tarantula. Okay. So now that's all filled in and ready to go there. So back to the main one. Okay, it's moved. Uh, point craft. I'm going to shoot an image. Scope position. Okay, solve. Okay, that's where I want to go. And go to plus us. Oh yeah, I'll sync it. <coughs> I mean, it really shouldn't go anywhere because it's showing you where the tarantula nebula is right in the middle here anyway. But that's just to get it right. So I'm assuming you've you know, got your cameras in focused, your polar aligned and everything else is fine like that. Um, it's just a normal setup you do. So that's done there. And that's done. Okay, so close down that. So now both cameras will be on target, as long as they're both pointing in the same direction, of course. And to do your actually multi-camera imaging, uh, what you need to do is you go over to camera 2. I might actually shorten these exposures down to 4 seconds, I think. Uh, okay, update current, okay. So, to start your multi-camera session, you always start with the client, uh, the one with the shorter ones. So I'm just going to click start on that, then go straight over to my main camera and click start on that. Now if you go to your gear tab, control click on the setting buttons, so control, hold it down, click on it, you get this monitor and it tells you what's going on with your um, second camera. This will list up to 10 cameras um, if you have more than you know, a couple. So there's only one client, so the first client syncing. Okay, so now it's done three before this has done its first one. So that's how that works there. I've just got to let this go through. This will only take, uh, you know, it's a 60 seconds I set it all up to do. And it will be all done. And I forgot to turn on the data craft. Hmm, interesting. I meant to do that. <laughs> uh, oh, well. So now it's taking the second image, lots of images. So each time you see sync there, it's it's the client checking if it's got time to do another image before the uh, other one starts. So if it hasn't got four seconds left, it won't take another image. And that's why you can't do the um, full setup and expect to get the full number of images simply because of the time it takes to sync and copy files, etc, etc. So it's waiting for the dither. So it's got to wait now for a message from the main camera, dithering finished, and it'll start. And if you watch your data, your uh, log screen down the bottom, it'll come up and tell you loose server mode, waiting for client can start a new exposure. So it just tells you what's going on. So, okay, well, it's finished the three. Uh, now it'll just finish off the last three on the client and it'll be done and that's all there is to doing multiple cameras um, as long as you set up the site client and the server properly you won't have any issues so it's just got these last few to do once the dither's finished uh, there you go dithering's finished and the last three will work through on your client now if you're using Datacraft to transfer your files, I forgot to activate it in here, uh, but I transfer them. I used to use the uh, real-time mode, but I'm just testing out now how it goes transferring it at the end of the night. It doesn't take long. 
um, but make sure that all the images finishing uh, finish before you do the transfer and you will have to do the transfer from both uh, the issues uh, instances of APT but that's it so the clients now finished uh, both finished and we're all done um, any questions uh, ask me later on in the uh, comments below or better yet head over to the APT forums there's always plenty of people over there and then you just shut down like you do normally I'm going to disconnect this camera and close that running of APT um, seeing this is all done um, I can just close this one I can't I've got to turn the cooler off oh, what am I doing? cooler off yes so that's how it's done uh, just like I said just remember the data do your data craft transfers from both instances before you shut down if you're using that uh, but now I can disconnect the camera and shut that down and that's it for uh, multi-camera operation um, I'll leave this one here it's been quite a long video so I wish you all clear skies and I'll see you in the near future bye y'all